Look, I don't understand the defense position here being so cavalier about the results. I wouldn't want those results out. I would take a definitive position here because it, both sides need to protect witnesses. Both sides need to protect taint, not just one side or the other. The prosecution is zeroing in right now on their experts, who they're going to have uh, consult, who they're going to have testify at trial. So protecting that information is actually important, and it works to protect both sides. Well, let me, let me read something from the defense motion, and it's about Chris Watts' rights being damaged. Um, this was language, and I'm going to ask our, our control room to grab that full screen number four for me, because I think this is really telling. It's kind of legalese, but it gets really, I guess it really gets down and dirty to what the defense wants the public to know. And let me read here. Mr. Watts writes to a fundamentally fair proceeding and unto ultimately a fair and impartial jury at trial have been so substantially damaged in this case, it does not seem that any prophylactic order, at least on the narrow issue, issue of whether the autopsy should be released, can serve to salvage the wreckage of those rights which may remain. It's really dramatic stuff if you're a lawyer. <laughs> it's maybe not as dramatic for a Hollywood script, but it's dramatic stuff if you're a lawyer. I'm trying to get to what this means, Rini. Are they trying to suggest over and over and over and